All right, guys, so I wanted to give an update to for the creeks. So that's what this video is about. Um, not only what creek conditions were like so far in Erie this season, um, the date that I was up there was September 11th, which last year at this time, there were actually a lot of steelhead pushed into the creeks. But what you have to take into account last year is weather was a little bit cooler and we had a lot more rain. This year we haven't had nearly as much rain. A lot of the creeks, they still have a lot of pebble build up at the um, mouth. So it's making it tough for fish to make it upstream. So I actually stopped at three creeks when I was up there. The first two, um, the last creek is the one that I'm gonna show. I have film of some fish in a pretty cool osprey that actually caught a steelhead. Um, we both ended up with one fish. Um, my steelhead was literally 14 inches, but you know what, that, that was okay. That wasn't the goal was to go up there and try and catch as many fish. That, that really wasn't the goal of this trip. But the second creek before the one on film, um, I didn't see any fish. Now, the first place we stopped was a very popular mouth fishing spot. And there were actually some fish in the waters that was prohibited fishing. I'm sure most of you will know by me saying that which place I'm talking about, but that that spot particularly did have some fish. Um, first light, that's where we were, um, about 5.30 in the morning until 8 in the morning. Through a lot of casts, um, I had one hookup, but that was it. I did see fish, however, but once it hit daylight, a lot of the locals started to show up. So I'm also going to talk about how do you catch so say we have another heavy rain like how are you going to catch steelhead when the water conditions are low and it's still a little bit early so the first thing i like to throw out as well you're going to want to go with a minnow imitation this early in the year. so the first thing that i threw that day was a jerk bait um i like this color in particular because to me, silver looks kind of like an alewife. That's a lot of the a lot of the food that the steelhead do eat in the lake. Um, my second is a woolly bugger jig. Now this is pretty much the same thing as any marabou jig that you can throw as well for them. Um, I like this because it triggers a lot of reaction strikes. You know, as this bounces up and down along the creek in front of those fish, it's I'm telling you, it's going to trigger those fish into hitting it. Now, another thing that I did throw, and this is what I actually had my hookup on, was this is just a random color I'm pulling out, but um, throwing spoons at the mouth. Like this is just a little Cleo. Um, those are the three things I like to use early season for steelhead. Um, you could throw a spinner, you could throw flies, steamers. You could probably get away with just about anything that has a minnow imitation. But I will say with that water being low, if you're spin fishing like I do, you're going to want four pound fluorocarbon. Um, I like invis -X. I know it's a little more on the pricey side, but I've had a lot of good luck with that. And it seems to hold its strength pretty well. I've caught a lot of steelhead on four pound fluorocarbon with invis -X. So that's going to be your trick, honestly. And not only that, you're not going to want to walk in front of all the fish and try, you know, throw right in front of them. You're going to have to stay a little bit of a distance away. This is where you know, good casting really comes into comes into play because there, there are a lot of people pressuring still, even this early in the season, the handful of steelhead that are going to be in a creek near you. And you're going to want to have to, you know, beat your odds, if per se. You're going to want to stand back a little bit farther. You're going to want to throw at those fish and maybe even a direction or a presentation that you think they haven't seen before. So enough of me talking. Um, I'm going to show the clip of some of the steelhead in the creek, and it'll show you what conditions are like. Alright guys, so there's some definite early season steelhead up here in Erie. We tried for a good half an hour, and none of those fish would bite. Interestingly enough, the one person that did catch a fish it's actually pretty wild. I wish I had it on film. We got to watch him literally swoop down out of nowhere and take the fish. 
I mean, that's, that's pretty unbelievable. But the steelhead conditions, the water's extremely low. If you do hook a fish, you'd want to try and get the fish in quickly without hurting it and then revive the fish if need be. This water's still a little bit warm. We haven't had rain. So you're definitely, if you do end up catching a fish, like I said, if you plan on releasing it, you do need to take good caution to make sure that that fish survives. I mean, you might have better luck than we did. We, these fish are so spooky, they want nothing to do with anything, you know, from uh, we threw a bead at them, we threw a little jerk bait, threw a trout magnet, threw I mean, Berkeley Gulp, we threw literally everything at these fish and they, they just were not having it. But I just wanted to share some of the conditions with you guys and there are some fish in Erie right now. You can get some cool film here. This guy here, that fish right there, that's a pretty big steelhead. And that would have been a lot of fun to catch. There's a couple of bigger ones. I don't know if on camera you're going to be able to see. But honestly, just sitting here getting to look at these fish is just as seriously as good as um, hooking one. Just to see them. I don't believe they've made it very far upstream yet. We're very close to the lake. Like I said, we're going to need some, some pretty heavy rainfalls. And we're going to need some cold water to get these fish a little more active and moving upstream. Just gonna give you guys another view. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.